If people are not listening to you, stop talking to them. And that's really, that is the best piece of advice that I can give you. I don't think we have friends, for the most part, who support us. Everybody loves you when things are going great, but you really get to see who you are and who the real people around you are when things aren't. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan-level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and make a difference using it. So let's start your day off right. Grab your cup of coffee and sip on today's message. Know when to pull back. Over to you, Jordan Peterson. I wake up every morning. I noticed that there's always a group of, of my friends who always criticize what I'm saying and not even um, try to understand what I'm, where I'm coming from. And um, I've, I've always wondered how to deal with that. I mean, I want to listen to what they are saying, but... Um, they're not understanding what I'm, they're not trying to listen to what I'm saying. So what would you do in that situation? I'm going to answer that very briefly. Okay. There's a, a line in the New Testament that's relevant to that. Do not cast pearls before swine. And what that means is that if people are not listening to you, stop talking to them. And that's really, that is the best piece of advice that I can give you. And what happens is, is that if you stop talking to people who aren't listening to you, and start watching them instead, they will tell you what they're up to. But so if you have things to say, say them, but you find people that will listen, talk to them. The ones who aren't listening, pull back. Because you're, you're devaluing what you have to say by offering it to an audience that does nothing but reject it. And that's a good guideline to life in general. So pull back. I don't think most people are afraid of failing. I think what people are afraid of is failing in front of others. You think of some big idea that you want to do, if it doesn't work and it's just you, then that's okay. But if you know that somebody else is going to see you fail and you're going to have to eat their judgment, that look in their eye, that joke and the ribbings that they're going to give you, I think that's what really holds people back. And I think that's a really dangerous place to be in. The idea that you will not go off and chase your dream, you will not go off and do the thing that you want to do because some friend of yours, somebody that you grew up with might judge you. I think that's a terrible way to make a decision. And so how do you deal with it? Because I think that's a lot of people. I don't think we have friends for the most part who support us, who say, this is a great idea, go off and do it. Or who, if you are down, will actually build you up and want you to win. A lot of people's friends like watching their friends lose because it makes them feel good about themselves because they are so subconscious and have such a fragile ego that they can't handle having their friends be more successful than them. That's how most people's friends are and that's a, that's a really crappy place to be in. So how do you escape it? What do you do? What are the options? What are the suggestions? One, I would say just have empathy. And this goes for your friends, goes for your parents. A lot of time, you know, your friends do love you. They have a different perspective. Uh, they're, they're dealing with their own insecurities and that's why they may be hating on what you're doing. It has nothing to do with you. It's about them, their insecurities, their fears. They might have wanted to take a shot and they didn't win. And so they didn't want to tear you down from going off and doing your thing. And having that empathy removes the sting, removes the sting of the judgment. Two, understand that your friends don't want the same things that you want. They want something else. They want a different career. They want different options. They want to go down a different road. And so if somebody doesn't want the same thing that you want, then their opinions will be different. Then they value different things and that's okay. And again, just having that awareness removes the sting. Three, if you really value their, <laughs> their feedback, if you really want them to be an important part of your journey, then I would have an honest conversation. I wouldn't come at it from a negative perspective, which I think most people do. They'll come at it from a, a combative perspective point of view, they'll come out and say, why don't you support me? How come you don't believe in my dreams? How come you're being so negative all the time? And if you come at somebody from that perspective, what are they going to do? If somebody starts yelling at you, what are you going to do? You're going to put the wall up and you're going to fight back. That's not going to ultimately get you to where you need to go. I would come from a place of vulnerability. I come from a deeper, more sensitive place to say, listen, you're, you're my best friends. Like, I love you. I've been with you forever. Your opinion really means a lot to me. I'm trying to do this thing. I really want to know if it's going to work out. I can deal with it failing, but but I can't deal with not knowing. I can't deal with a lifetime of regret. I would I would love to have your support on this project. But every time I come, I feel like 
I feel just worse from a conversation with you. And that really tears me up because you're my best friend. And I hope that you'd be able to support me in my projects moving forward. And if you can come from a deep, honest place like that and really let them see the love that you have and how much you value their opinion, then it's really hard for them to still step all over you. <laughs> and if they do, then four, like maybe just spend less time with them. And that's tough advice, but maybe you shouldn't be spending as much time with them. You might need to completely walk away. If someone's just a negative source in your life, you might need to just cut them off and walk away completely. And if you're not willing to do that, maybe just limit access. Either limit access through time or you limit access through topics. So if your career is a thing that you keep fighting over, but you love hanging out and going to dinners and watching movies and everything else is great, then just don't talk about your career. That's off limits. You guys always get into fights over that. Just stop talking about that. And if they bring it up, just say, you know what? I don't want to talk about it and move on to the next topic. So limited access or completely cut off. So that's my suggestions. And, and again, I think it just sucks at how much our decisions that we want for ourselves, we base off of the people around us and the fear that they will judge us. And I think that's a really terrible framework to start with, where if you had a little more self-confidence, a little more belief in yourself and what you want to do, and just knowing that you can deal with a failure, but what you can't deal with is not knowing. Switching your framework to that so that when you're 90 years old, you're looking back on your life, you don't want to live with regrets saying, I wish I did that and I didn't because Billy told me not to. That's not the way that you want to live your life. Now I've got a really special bonus clip for you, but I want to know first, tell me about your friends. I want to know about your friends. Do you have the friends who support you, who build you up, who would be happy for you if you won? Or are your friends the kind of people who tear holes into your plans and your ideas and uh, aren't very supportive. You don't have to name names, but I just want to know kind of where you're coming at. I want to see your perspective. Leave in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another shot of Espresso and enjoy the bonus clip. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. The one thing that you better stay true to in this business is relationships. You know, you're going to meet a lot of people. And in Hollywood, everybody appears to be real, man, but it's a facade. You got to be a great character and a great judgment of character. You know, everybody loves you when things are going great. But you really get to see who you are and who the real people around you are when things aren't. And those people that you can tell are real, you hold on to. You know, you stay true to those relationships because there's going to come to a point where you go, damn, what do I have out here? What substance do I have out here? If it's not a party, if it's not a nightclub, if you're not in a relationship, what matters? It's only going to be about a good five or six people that actually matter. And those five or six people are going to be there for you whenever you need them. And the favors that I called on, those are long-term relationships, man. But I don't have many. You know, I got friends in the business that are really my friends, but I pride myself on the 10 to 12 that I have because they're genuine. They're real. Everything else just comes off as a as an associate. It's something that moves when you move in a high and by. But those real ones are real for a reason because when you call, they respond. The things that affect most people that they don't even realize. I did not know that my relationships affected me. My mother said, Leslie, if you run around with nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll become number 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, come to find out, Mama was right. She only had a third grade education. But the studies indicate, uh, MIT, that you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. So, so poverty and, and living a mediocre life is communicated mind to mind. And so your relationships can hold you down or they can lift you up. So I teach people to practice the principle of OQP. Only quality people. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. Mm. And so it's very important that people upgrade their relationships. So when you're choosing somebody, when you choose somebody to listen to, and you choose somebody to learn from, and you choose a business partner, you choose a client, they gotta be as crazy, and they gotta be as as you wow. are. That's how you get success. That's how you know you're going to be able to push that individual. That's how you know that relationship is going to last. You know, people talk about in business or think, oh, you got to find a balance. You got to find that person. You know, if you're one way, you got to find a person that's the other way. No, that's.
that's pulling you away from how you want to do things and how, if you're intense, the next person I want is to be as super, in as super intense. Now those people around you, they got to be smarter than you are. Right. You don't want to surround yourself with people that, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get more people in the room. Sure. Okay, you should not walk into the room and ever be the smartest person in there. Okay, the people around you have to be much smarter or at least in certain things. You may have an expertise in one thing, but that other individual better have an expertise that's beyond yours in something in something else. Okay? But from a mind standpoint, you know, MJ was just as f as I was. Kobe is just as f as I was from them from being the best okay I wanted to be the best at what I do they wanted to be the best at what they do all right so there was an attraction it's there. it's an attraction and those are the people that allow you to push them and allow them to they understand they want to get they want to get better you know they don't need to be motivated okay they're like you tell them hey that's so interesting they're not they're not hiring you to come motivate me they no. already want it as bad as they, you so. they want it. the best of the best already want it more than anybody else there's a reason they're the best you know we we talked about this earlier at lunch they're the ones that are show up to practice early okay they're the ones taking the extra shots they're the ones doing the wind sprints at the end they're the ones you know getting treatment, taking care of their body. They're showing up, they're showing up on off days. I mean, you're saying, you're, saying, you're sending the guys home. You're saying you gotta go home. You gotta go much. home. Go you home got, already. You gotta, you gotta literally, you gotta, you gotta tell them to leave. You don't have to tell them to show up. You gotta tell them to leave. Oh that, 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 that's enough. You know, you have people in your office yeah. and you look at it. You know, how many employees do you have now? We got 4,200 agents. 4,200 agents, okay? Out of 4,200 agents, okay? If you put them all in the, all in the room, Okay, and you were able to put them all in one shop together. All right, and say your hours were nine to five. Okay, you'd have 4,200 people in here from nine from nine to five o'clock uh, from five o'clock. After five o'clock, may have 500. After seven o'clock, you may have 200. After nine o'clock, you may have five. And then guess what? At the end of the day, there's going to be one light left on. Maybe two, yours and somebody else's. That person's as up as you are. <laughs> But you can count on that individual. That. You can count on that individual. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word, this is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.